Hello and welcome. This session is all about Azure AD conditional access and workload identities. I'll explain exactly what workload identities are and how they can authenticate to Azure AD using a shared secret or a signed assertion. If you want an introduction to setting up conditional access, please watch my video on understanding Azure AD conditional access configuration. There's a link in the description. This is right up to date for April 2023. Don't forget to subscribe and keep learning. Click the bell to keep up to date. Come with me into the cloud. Let's start by uh, talking about client credential flow. This is also called client credential grant in OAuth 2 speak. We have three players. We have the application that wants to access the API. The application in OAuth 2 speak is referred to as the client and it has a client ID. The API is sitting on our resource server and to be able to get access to that resource server, we need an authorization server and in our environment that is Azure AD. So the first thing that happens is the application makes a request to Azure AD to the token endpoint. And it says, please give me an access token that will prove that I'm authorized to access the API. And here are my credentials. We'll come back to the credentials in a moment. So Azure AD checks out the application or the client's credentials. And if those are okay, the next thing it does is it runs conditional access if we're using conditional access for workload identity. If everything is okay and we're granted access, the Azure AD issues an access token. This access token is then used to present the authorization of the application to the backend API. Backend API validates the access token and returns whatever data is necessary. Okay, that's it. It's a very simple model. We don't need refresh tokens or anything like that because of course we've always got the credentials and we can always present them again. So the question is, what are our credentials? Well, the simplest way of doing it is where our credentials are a combination of the client ID and a shared secret. The shared secret is generated in the Azure AD tenant and then shared with the application. And that's sort of where it all gets a bit risky because the application will need to hold that secret somehow. And the problem is it will probably go in a file or something like that. And quite often these files are uploaded onto GitHub and we've immediately got leaked credentials. An alternative to using a secret is for the application or the client to sign an assertion about itself. The assertion really proves who the client is. And that assertion is signed with an X509 certificate private key. And the private key is held securely by the application. So it could be held in the Windows certificate key store. Alternatively, it could be held in a hardware security module. And there's some very nice hardware security modules that are very easy to use, uh, for instance, from YubiKey that actually plug in to the USB port. A signed assertion, best way. Uh, we can use a secret, but then you risk leaked credentials. If we're looking at the signed JSON web token or the signed assertion, uh, what it is, it's generated by the client. The audience that we have in there is the token endpoint. So we can see token there. The issuer is the client because it's the issuer generating this and the subject. This is who it's about is also the client. All of this is signed with the private key that never leaves the client or the application. Great. That works really, really nicely. Now, in terms of 
the permissions that go on the access token, if we're using application permissions, then they have to be statically defined in the portal. And they also uh, need to be granted in terms of permissions or consent needs to be granted by an administrator. I'll show you that in a demo. Now, one thing you may have heard of is Azure Managed Identities. This is for workloads running on the Azure platform. And the beauty of managed identities is we don't have to worry about secrets. We don't have to worry about certificates or anything like that. It's all managed for us. But I'm not going to say any more about Azure managed identities here because currently they do not work with conditional access policies for workloads. So we'll leave it at that point. OK, let's get to a demo. Let's start by using my demo app which is OIDC v2. And I'm going to select a scope of um, the, the API uh, forward slash dot default. And what dot default will do is it will basically is saying, please give me whatever has been statically defined in terms of permissions for this application. So I'm going to get a token uh, to the web API using client credential. And this is it. So it's there's the API, that's the audience. And if we look in the roles, we've got edit up. We've got one permission to the backend API. Okay, let's have a look at the communication between the server and Azure AD. And if we look in there, what we can see is the grant type is client credential. So we can see the grant type in there. We're passing the secret. Uh, don't worry, don't try that secret. I will have changed it by the time this video is released. Uh, there's the scope I've asked for, which is whatever is set in the portal. And there's the client ID. So that's the, so there are credentials we've passed are the client ID and also the client secret. OK, let's go into the portal. And what I want to do is just have a look at those permissions. So I'm going to go into Azure Active Directory. I'm going to go to Applications. And I'm looking at App Registrations. And in here, I'm going to look at XTS-OIDC v2, which is this guy, guy here. I'm going to look at the permissions that are defined. And what we can see to my API, it's just edit up. If I want to add another permission to my API, go add permissions. I choose my API and I see what other permissions are available. So we've got read DB as in read database. I'm going to add that in. Notice in here it says not granted and that's the permission. I need to do a grant admin consent on that. And now if we go back to the application itself and I click home on that and go in and go again, what we can see is we've now got read DB and both edit up. So that sort of gives you a little bit of an idea of how permissions work with application or workload identity. So now I want to look at conditional access. OK, so we'll switch over to the portal and uh, to go to conditional access here, we need to go to protect and secure under that conditional access. And I'm going to go create a new policy. And if we look there, we can see under users or workload identities, we can choose a workload. Now, if you don't see that, the reason is you don't have the appropriate license. So let me just switch over to a different directory. So I'm going to switch to my dev3 directory. And I'm going to go to conditional access in here. So we're looking for protect and secure conditional access. And again, create new policy. And under here, we've just got users and groups. And I don't have any ability of choosing the workload. So if I click on home here, I can go down to workload identities in the entry portal. 
and you'll see that it gives you information to say that you need a particular license. And if you want, you can click on the link and find out all about the licensing requirements. Alternatively, you could just click on try premium for free. Right, let's pop back to the directory where I actually have workload identities enabled. So I'm going to switch over here. Okay, so we'll go over to conditional access and we're going to go new policy. And the first thing is I need to give it a name. Well, I've already spoken at length about naming policies, so I'm just gonna grab one I had earlier. So I'm gonna copy that across here and pop that in there. Okay, um, I'll talk about the name in a second. Uh, in terms of the workload identity, I need to choose the workload. So I'm going to use my application um, as the workload identity. So I could choose all own service principles or selected. Now, when it comes to selection, I can select them based on custom security attributes. I've shown that to you a couple of times now in other videos. So I'm going to leave that. And what I'm going to do now is go and select the application directly. And the app is XTS OIDC V2. I'm gonna select this guy. And now the next thing is, when this workload is going to this application, let's have a look at what the applications are. Very little choice. It's either all apps or it's none. So I'm gonna say when it's going to any application. All right. Now the conditions, uh, remember previously when we looked at uh, conditional access for user identity, there were lots of different connections here. There are only two. Service principle risk, all right? And I will talk about that in a little bit more detail very shortly, and location. So I'm going to go and say, if this workload is coming from any location except for, and I'm going to choose in here my UK data center, except if it's coming from the UK data center, what I want to happen is I want to block access. So that's the only thing I can choose. It's either grant or it's block. I'm going to block. And then if we look at session controls, the only thing you can do under session controls is disable uh, continuous access evaluation. So, you know, very little choice actually as to what we can do. So I'm going to switch this policy on and I'm going to create it. Um, and that was successfully created. So let's go and experience this now as uh, the workload. So we're working with the app. We'll just close that off. Let's go to the application again. And we're going to select our scope. And then we're going to sign in using the client credential flow. So off we go and we're successfully in. And we would sort of expect that because we are actually inside the UK data center. So let's change that conditional access policy setting. And let's go and change the condition so rather than excluding the UK data center, what we'll do is exclude the UK office. So we're going to switch it over. So if you're in the UK, if this workload is in the UK office, it will work. But if it's in the UK data center, it should get blocked. So let's just save that. And once again, switch back to the application. Okay, so let's click home on that. And let's, uh, let's try again. So we'll try going in again. And we're blocked. We're, we're not getting. So let's just quickly switch over to the server. And we have a look at the server. We can have a look at that blocked interaction. And, you know, it's the client credential flow. So everything is as expected. But actually, if we look with JSON here, what we've got is the reply is saying access has been blocked by the conditional access policy. So that is a workload conditional access policy actually performing the block. Okay, let's go back to the portal 
and let's have a look under sign-in logs. So our sign-in logs now have the ability of looking at service principle sign-ins. So I'm going to choose that one. And uh, we had a failure for OIDC v2. So let's open that up and see what we've got in here. And if we select this one, we can see that uh, the location we're coming from is actually the UK data center. OK, and remember, we said we only excluded the UK office. So we change that across. And if we look at conditional access, we can see that there was a failure on this conditional access. It got blocked. So we had a match on the search principle. We had a match on the application. Uh, we had a match. So it was all networks except for the UK office. And of course, the grant control was blocked. Now, you can see the advantage of using a sensible name. Uh, so it applies to all applications. It's blocked for workload. And this is the particular workload. It's blocked for XTS OIDC v2 when any network location excluding, and I should have updated this, the UK office. But I think you can see the advantage of the naming convention that I actually use. And the reason I called it SN0001 is that it would appear at the top of the list. So we didn't have to go hunting for it at the bottom. Let's just have a quick look at the identity risk. Okay, so we'll close this lot off and let's just go back to our policies. And we've got our SN001 policy. And just to remind ourselves, remember, is in terms of the conditions uh, we can base it on risk, high, medium, low. And there's lots of ways that this risk is detected. It's zero AD threat intelligence is actually finding sort of behavior patterns that look a bit dodgy. Uh, it could be suspicious sign-ins of some kind. It could be that it's sort of been detected as a malicious application. Um, the list goes on and I suggest you have a look at the Microsoft documentation, but one big one is leak credentials. So let's have a look under identity protection. And what we can see is risky sign-ins, also risk detections and risky workload identities. So I'm going to choose risky workload identities and it's actually found one. OK, and it's saying this risky app. So let's have a look at a little bit more detail. Uh, we've got the history. Uh, oh, it's leaked credentials. OK, and if we look at the service principle risk detections, uh, it will actually give us even more details. Now, this happened over seven days ago. So I'm going to choose the, the last 90 or the last month should do us. So we'll choose that. And there it is. And it's showing, yes, we've got leaked credentials. But look at this. Click here for more details. And I click on that. And oh, riskyapp.txt was actually put up onto GitHub. And goodness me, look who did it. John CRA. I shall have to have words with John CRA. This is really nice now that we can actually detect risky workloads and actually stop them in their tracks using conditional access. Or if a workload is running somewhere it shouldn't run, then again, you can stop it in its tracks. Thanks for watching this session. Now you are fully up to date with Azure AD conditional access workload identities for April 2023. Don't forget to subscribe and keep learning. And please click that bell to receive notifications as the new videos become available. I'll see you next time in the cloud. Thanks for watching my channel. Subscribe for more free training. You might like to join me for my Identity Masterclass. Hopefully, see you soon.